Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Power Sunday with your own Dr. Tanya Williams. I am grateful that we are together again this morning. Oh, my God, I see all your comments. Happy, happy Mother's Day to all. Happy Mother's Day. I'm sending kisses and loves and hugs and all that wonderful stuff. Happy, happy Mother's Day. I'm just so grateful for another day in the land of the living. Thank the many of you that have been wishing me a happy Mother's Day. I appreciate it. I might not be a natural mother, but I'm definitely a spiritual mother and, and, and a God mommy. So again, thank you. Thank you so much for joining. And, and a spiritual mother, a God mother, mentor, all that stuff, sister, cousin, whatever. But thank you so much, and good morning, and welcome to Power Sunday with your own Dr. Tanya Williams. Today, I'm streaming from my um, my prayer and consecration page instead of my Facebook page, because many were saying that they weren't friends with me, and they were having challenges getting the notification. So, I'm on prayer and consecration, so when you get a chance, those of you that's on the line, share the love, share the love, share the love. We know that sharing is caring, sharing is caring, and I'm grateful that the Lord has allowed us to come together this morning. I, I, I played this morning Speak to My Heart by Donnie McClurk, and I played the instrumental version of it because that is where I want to go today. I want to really deal with the Lord speaking to our heart. And for those of you that are new to us, um, this is, my name is Dr. Tanya Williams, and I've been doing uh, uh, some ministry for, God knows, I don't know, maybe about 20, 25 years now, and um, I'm grateful for the assignments that the Spirit of the Lord has placed on my heart in this time and this hour, and for those of you that have been connected uh, via my aroma prayer that comes on every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6.30 a.m., my keeping the momentum that comes on at 7, my power gathering that's a group that, that's at 10 a.m., and then this morning you're with me on uh, Power Sunday, and I'm grateful for those of you that, you know, don't really know much about listening listen and I believe that you'll truly be blessed and truly be inspired on today amen amen so as we come together I see the many of you I think the many of you that's listening to me via um our conference call line those of you that are watching and listening via uh uh, Facebook Live, those of you that are listening via YouTube and our other platforms, good morning to you and welcome, welcome, welcome. So I just thank God for this day and again for those of you who just came on, I want to wish you a blessed and a happy Mother's Day. For those of you that are mothers or your mothers are still here, God bless you. Happy Mother's Day. But I also want to take the time. Sometimes we focus on that, but we also forget about there's another group. There's another group of people that uh, mothers are not here. Uh, mothers have tran transitioned. We pray for you and encourage you because this could, this could be a challenging day for many of them. Uh, a, a day where people are hurting. A day where people are feeling, are feeling a, 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 a little bit uh, challenged. And I want to make sure that we don't forget about you and we love on you as well. So we are loving on, we're loving on you for those of you that are going through. And not only that, some of you might have just lost your mothers over the last couple of weeks uh, dealing with COVID-19 or just maybe even the loss uh, this year. And this might be your first Mother's Day. We send you a big old hug in the spirit, Mwah! a big kiss on your cheek and knowing that you are not alone, that there is somebody else that has experienced and has walked through and is walking through what you're walking through. But just know what we got your back and we're in it together. And then this morning, as I was laying here in prayer, the Lord spoke to me. He said, there's another group that we're missing, those that have lost their children. There, there's mothers today that have lost their children via over the last year, even during the course of the years, or maybe during COVID-19. We send love to you right now as well. We kiss on you. We love on you. We appreciate you uh, because we want to let you know that you're not in it alone. You're not in it alone, and we're just praying, we're just praying for you. So um, for those of you that have lost loved ones or family members during this time, and this is your first Mother's Day, you know, just remember this, and I know it's okay to have your human moment. I would appreciate that you did have your human moment, but I don't want grief to overtake you. 
You know why? Because you have to realize that for those, for those of you that have lost your mothers, they were the birth canal that God used to bring you into this earth. They might have, they might not have been perfect or they might have been the most perfect mother, but wherever they might have found themselves in the spectrum, you are here because of them. And today we celebrate them. We celebrate every laughter. We celebrate every hug. We, we celebrate every instruction. We celebrate every correction. We celebrate them today. And I want you to know that you have one of the greatest things that you can ever have, the memories of them in your heart. So sometimes, you know, the enemy will try to make us look at what we don't have. But I want you to take a moment today and think about the things that you do have, the greatest memories, the the and the, the impartations that's been made in your life or even just the fact that you might look like them or you do or you do something like that. Something like them. Celebrate that today. Do you hear me? Celebrate that. And for those of you that have lost your children, well, no matter how, what age, from an infant up until 60, 70 years old, and you're, and you're still here, and you had to bury a child, we love on you as well. Same, same thing with you, the loving memories of, of, of your child is still with you. And we just come to again to encourage you, to build you up and to strengthen you and know that mwah, you are loved. Amen. You are loved. So again, we appreciate you. So this morning, I want to share the word, the word of the Lord that the Lord has placed on my heart for his people on uh, today. And the Lord gave me the word on yesterday. And the word was follow the instructions follow the instructions. I said, and Lord, and I was going to change the message to follow his instructions, but he says, no, the topic is follow the instructions. So this morning I'm going to be speaking and I'm going to try to do it within an hour because I know that many of us, you know, you're up, you're up early and I appreciate you being with me and, and, and just praying with me. And, um, I just want to share the word of the Lord with you this morning. Amen. Amen. So our, our, our topic this morning is follow the instructions, follow the instructions. I'm going to be reading three, three scriptures from the English standard version. Okay. The ESV version, Proverbs 19 and 20, <clears throat> the Bible says, listen to advice and accept instruction that you may gain wisdom in the future. Listen to advice and accept instruction that you may gain wisdom in the future. Psalm 32 and 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. And our last scripture, Proverbs 4 and 13 states, Keep hold of instruction. Do not let go. Guard her for she is your life. So as I started to prepare and I started to, to lay before the Lord and to get understanding of what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, this is the hour now that we have to, we have to hear the instruction of the Lord. We have to accept structure, instructions. Sometimes we want to do what we want to do, but it's not always for us to do what we want to do. We got to obey God. We might be feeling strong. We might be feeling wonderful. But if the Lord says stand still, we have to stand still. If we're on an employment, we're on a job and we want to move and it's not time for you to leave that job. You must obey the instruction of the Lord and stand still. You might be in a marriage and the marriage seems like it's going haywire, it's going to the left instead of going to the right and you already seeking out a lawyer for your divorce papers. Follow the instructions and if, and the, if the instructions of the Lord say don't go, you must stand still. This is the hour now that we must listen and heed to the voice of God because through that we may gain wisdom. Understand this, that the Father, our God, He is omniscient. He knows all things and because He knows all things, when we follow the instructions, we gain wisdom for our future. We gain wisdom for our future. That's why he say he says he wants to instruct us and he wants to teach us in the way that we should go. Uh, I was is reminiscing this morning and the Lord brought brought, brought back a uh, uh, um a parable, a proverb that I would teach when I would teach my mentoring class and the proverb was when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. 
when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And what that means is that when you are ready for your next, when you are ready to go where God has designated for you to go, the Lord will raise up someone to be a guide and a director and even a mentor or even a midwife to birth you to your next. So this is the hour that if you are ready, though those have those that have been called to your life will appear and be that blessing in your life. So we got to be ready for instruction. We have to be ready to be 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 to be, to, to be taught. Understand this and know this that when it comes to teaching, you know, a teacher never stops learning. When I took my te my teacher's training class when I was in a uh, Bible school, and that's one of the things that. Uh, was one of our our, our, ba our base um, scriptures and, and base takeaways from the class is that a teacher never stops learning. We must study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So we so we should be people that are teachable. You know, so I want you to lay your hands on yourself and say, Lord, make me teachable. Lord, make me teachable. Lord, make me teachable. Lord, make me teachable. Teach me in the way that I that I should go, that I may follow your counsel, uh, uh -huh, that I may obey your voice. Uh, see, it's time now for us to hold on to the instruction that's given to us. We must guard it because the Bible says that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But what? He comes that we may have life. God comes, the Lord comes, Jesus comes, that we may have life and have it, what, more abundantly. And so God has given us instructions and when the instructions come, sometimes because of the circumstances and the situations we might be facing, uh, we we might tend to veer off in other different areas, steer off in other different areas. But we have to know in this time that we must guard the instruction. Uh, we must keep it. Uh, we must be sensitive to what the Spirit of the Lord is saying in this season and saying in this hour. See, we all have to make choices. You, me, each day is a choice when we get up um if we're going to pray if we're going to uh, if we're going to go and get a, and, and get ourselves prepared, are we going to go make breakfast? Uh, are we going to first thing we're going to do, turn on the TV or the laptop? What are we doing? See, you have to understand and you have to know that we all make choices that affect our progress. We all make choices. Uh, uh -huh. Even the Bible says he lays before us what life and death choose. You know, there's the life is about choices. Life is about choices uh, and good and good choices bring promised blessings and bad choices can bring undesired consequences some of us have made good good choices and we're walking in the um the, the reaping time of it and some of us have made bad choices and now we're doing what we are walking in the undesired consequences uh, because to everything there is a consequence a good consequence as well as a bad consequence but in this hour we want to operate and walk in good promises uh the promises and the blessings of god see life is so uncertain three months ago we were doing well celebrating you know just uh, enjoy enjoying life and then all of us served all of a sudden, life took a sharp turn. And in it taking a sharp, a sharp turn, we realize that time is short. We realize that time is precious. We, we realize that time is valuable. We realize that we, not, we, we have to get ourselves together. Because sometimes we can have a, fall, a false hope or a, fall, a false sense of security. But every now and then the Lord needs to shake us up and he needs to wake us up and let us know that we need to get ourselves together. See, it's time now that life is all about what? Instructions. Uh -huh. God wants us to follow instruction because he knows the way that we take. He knows what he has deposited. He knows what he has imparted down in us and he wanted, wants us to follow it through fruition. Instruction is the foundation of our lives. And we can either prioritize five found, uh, instruction or we can ignore it. What are you doing? When instruction is given to you, do you follow it or 
do you throw it to the side for uh, for another day? When somebody gives you instruction to, 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 to do something, the instruction is given because even the person before you has already walked it and they know what to expect or they know or they know what's going to come 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 from the obedience. And instruction is given for for you to what? To reap the fruit of what you're trying to enter into. See, it's time now that we must prioritize the instruction that is given to us by God, depending on what they are, what day it is, or even who is given the instructions. At times we will tend to ignore the instruction, but see, this is the hour now that we have to obey God. This is the hour now that we, we can't lean to our own understanding, but we must obey God. The word instruction means to teach. The word instruction means to inform. The word instruction means to give an order or command to a lesson a precept uh order or or direction god is speaking to us in this hour and when the lord spoke to me yesterday he said i want you to speak to my people and tell them to follow the instruction so that means that the lord is about to speak to many of you concerning directions he wants to teach you some things he wants to inform you some things he doesn't want you ignorant to satan's devices uh, there is a command an order that god wants to give unto your people or even a lesson and we have to be open and receptive to receive the instruction one of the greatest challenges that i can have even as a mentor is i can sit down and i can instruct them but it's up to them whether or not they want to obey and follow the instruction and I have seen people that follow the instruction. I see them growing, maturing, doing th great things for God. And I see people who didn't follow the instruction and they're still spinning on ice. Their wheels are still spinning on ice and they're not going anywhere. Instruction is key in this hour. Instruction is key in this hour. If God is to guide us and, to guide, and, and if God is to lead us, we must follow listen to him when he's speaking to us that's why i shared the song this morning speak to my heart speak to my heart holy spirit i need instruction if i don't hear from you i won't know what to do mm -hmm. this is the hour now god we need to hear from you because if we don't hear from you we won't know what to do we need you to speak to us we need you to talk to us and we need you to give us instruction and proverbs 3 five and six a very familiar scripture that many of you have heard and and, and 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 have even memorized it says trust in the lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths he says what he will give us understanding he will what if we just trust him and believe and acknowledge him there will be a direction there will be an instruction huh? there will be a command given to us according to the way that he wants us to go in the amplified bible that particular scripture says trust in and rely confidently on the lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. In all your ways, know and acknowledge and recognize him. Do you hear me? In all your ways, know and acknowledge and recognize him. And he will make your path straight and smooth, removing obstacles that block your way. That's why we got to believe and confidently trust in God because he knows what is before us. He knows what is waiting for us. He knows what the enemy has planned for us. But if we will believe and trust and have a confidence in the God that we serve, we will not miss him in this hour. We must learn to, we must learn to listen to the Lord and obey. We must learn to listen to the Lord and obey. The Lord gives us instruction in this hour. He tells us to do this. He tells us to, to do that. He tells us to go here. He tells us to go there. And sometimes he tells us to go. And sometimes he tells us to stay still. But we must hear the voice of God. We see so many times, many of us, we're hearing, but we're not obeying. Do you hear me? We're hearing, but we're not obeying. This is the hour now that we must obey God. We must obey God. And when God speaks, we must follow his instructions to the minor detail because he knows what is laying ahead for us. If we follow instructions, we need to closely listen to the Lord and obey his, his instructions. And when we do that, we will be blessed.
the Lord will begin to guide us and lead us away from troubles. Some things he will lead us away from, some things will, he will lead us to. But wherever he leads us, we know that he's with us. And we know we have the inside hookup because we know that the Father is with us. Uh, Proverbs 10 and 17 tells us, uh, He is in the way of life that keepeth instruction, but he that refuses reproof erreth. And I'll read that from the Amplify. And it says, He who learns from instruction and correct Direction is on the right path of life. And for others, his example is a path towards wisdom and blessing. Oh my God, I got to read that again. He who learns from instruction and correction is on the right path. Are you ready to be on the right path today? So you know what the key is? Learning from instruction and correction that is given to us. Yes, uh huh. Because whom the Lord loves, he corrects. Whom the Lord loves, he instructs. Uh, he gives us instructions and it's up to us to obey the instructions. Uh, he who learns from instruction and correction is on the right path of life. And for others, his example is a path towards wisdom and blessings. But he who ignores and refuses correction goes off course. And, uh, and for others, his example is a path towards sin and ruin. This is the hour now we're not going to go off course. There may, there might been times, children of God, that we have gone off course. There might be times that we took a left turn instead of taking a right turn. There might be times that we took our own personal detour instead of following the instructions of the Lord. I remember one morning I was on, I was on my way to work and this is when I was working in Lake Success. I was maybe like 10, 15 minutes from, from my house. And usually I would just hop on the parkway, uh, just hop on across the island to the Northern state. Now, boom, I was there in mat matters of minutes. And that morning, the spirit of the Lord told me, do not take the parkway, take the, um, take the side streets and I looked and the parkway looked clear and I'm like no I'm gonna get on the parkway so as soon as I turned the bend there was a two so I got on the parkway and I turned the corner I turned turned on to the uh um I turned on to the um uh, to the uh, parkway there was an accident and the accident blocked all three lanes it blocked all the lanes and, and, and in it blocking the lane, it caused the traffic to be at a dead spot, a dead stop. And I was in between exits, so I couldn't go anywhere. And you know me, for those of you who know me, I would drive on grass. I'll drive up hills to get, to get off parkways. You know, that's the area I need to be delivered in. But I was stuck in between exits for almost an hour. And, and I sat there and the spirit of the Lord said, I told you not to get on the parkway. That's just a little example of what I want to use of many of us. Now we need to follow the instruction of God. We're doing what we want to do. And God says, I know what's ahead of you. I know what's waiting for you, but you're looking at, and at that moment, I, I looked at the parkway and the parkway was clear. The parkway was clear. But then when I got on it and I turned the corner, oh, it was a whole different story. So what, so what am I saying, saying to you today? The Lord is saying this is the hour that we must do what? Follow his instructions. And in Proverbs 19 and 20, it tells us, Hear counsel and receive instruction, that thou mayest be wise in thy latter end. Amplify. Listen to counsel. Receive instruction and accept correction. I want you to lay your hands on yourself and say, Lord, teach me to listen to counsel, receive instruction, and accept correction. Let's say that again. Lord, teach me to listen to counsel, receive instruction, and accept correction. Because if we do that, we might be wise. We will become wise in time to come. Wisdom will be our bed partner. But we must learn to listen to counsel, receive instruction, and accept correction. See, this is the hour now that we must listen and follow the instruction of the Lord. Abraham, you know, I tell you guys all the time, I am an Old Testament baby. I love the Old Testament. Abraham, 
The Bible says, by faith, Abraham obeyed God's call, even though he didn't know where he was going. That's in Hebrews 11 and 8. And going back to Genesis chapter 11, Genesis chapter 12, we find that the Lord speaks to Abram and said, I want you to leave your father's house and I want you to follow my instructions and I'm going to take you to a new place. Now, mind you, the Lord didn't tell Abraham where, where he was taking him. But he said, I want you to take you, I, I'm going to take you somewhere. And so Abraham, by faith, had to now leave that which was familiar to him and follow a God in which he was new to, but he heard him follow his instruction to take him to where he had designated for his life. Now, during the course of that time, as he obeyed, the Lord revealed, as he obeyed, the Lord revealed, he he revealed he was going to make him a great nation. He he revealed he's going to make him the father of faith. He just revealed so many things to him, the land, the riches, other different things. But these these revelations was given to him as he obeyed and as as he followed the instructions. As he followed the instructions. Uh, see, our, our life will mature and grow as we follow the instructions. Every time Abraham went, and God gave him instructions and he obeyed the instructions. Uh, there, there was another level of, of favor that was given to him. There was another level of revelation that was given to him because he what? He followed the instructions. Uh, see, Abraham did exactly what God told him to do. He walked with the Lord. He and, and 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 at that time the Lord didn't reveal to him the entire path because with each step into the unknown, God was strengthening his faith. Children of God, each step that you take into the unknown, God is strengthening your faith. We don't know each day what is before us. We thought, okay, the numbers are going down, COVID-19, okay, we got a grasp to it. We got to know the gloves and the and the PPEs and the mask, uh, you know, the social distancing, and we'll be all right. And then now, the last couple of days, our children are being affected. Now, okay, God, what is going on? What is going on? Each day, we're stepping into the unknown. But each day, we know one thing, that God is in control, and he is strengthening our faith. And we have to be to a point where we do what? Where we follow the instruction. Uh, let's talk about another person, Noah. Noah, the Lord gave Noah some rather unique instructions. Uh, make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark. Cover it inside and outside with pitch. Uh, that's found in Genesis 7 and 14. Specific dimensions and, and more were also included in God's command. Noah's task would take many years to complete. And in fear, not just fear because he was scared, but reverent fear because he feared the Lord. He had a reverence for him. Uh, he, 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 he honored God. Uh -huh. And with this reverent fear, Noah faithfully built the ark for the saving of his household. But not only he didn't realize at that moment that it wasn't just for the saving of his household, it was for the saving of mankind. It was the saving of mankind. Uh-huh. The Genesis 6 and 22 tells us, uh, thus Noah did according to all that God commanded him. So he did. Can God say that about you today? Can God say, uh-huh, can God say that about you? Thus Jane did. Just Mary did. Just Rochelle did. Just Shireen did. Just, thus Ernestine did. Thus Eleanor did, according to all that God commanded him or her. So he did. Can God can God say that about you? Is that your testimony today? Can he say that whatever God has spoken to you, that you were according to all that God commanded, all that God commanded, you followed. You follow the instruction. See, this is the time now we, we got to get some, self, some things together, even including myself. We got to get some things together. There are some things that, that the Lord is requiring of us that now we must go to another place. We must go to, to another level. See, thanks to Noah's obedience, members of every kind of, of animal were protected from the global flood. Noah and his family were on the ark preserving mankind so that what Jesus Christ would eventually be born as a descendant of Adam through Noah. Noah's obedience led to 
to the salvation from the global flood. What would your obedience do if you would just follow the instructions? What would your obedience do if you would just follow the instructions? Now, let's go to Joshua. Because, again, sometimes the instructions God give you, it doesn't make any sense. But you got to know, he that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying in this hour and in this time. We got to hear the voice of God. In Joshua, Joshua chapter 6, Joshua needed guidance. He needed instruction as he faced one of the most crucial moments of his life. The Lord had promised him great success in conquering Jericho. Even when God spoke to him in Joshua chapter 1, he told him what to meditate on the word of God day and night. He promised to be with them. Uh, he promised that his hand would be with them, uh, that he would have great victories uh, and he would have great success. So now he find himself at Jericho. Uh huh. And he's realized now, God, I need instruction. God, I need guidance. Uh, God, I need direction. Uh, he knew that if he didn't have the instructions right, that he, he knew personally what the outcome of the battle will be uh-huh and when the day of combat approach uh, he needed what specific strategy for the victory instruction is strategy instruction is the plan of god uh, see we need to be connected with god that we have these specific strategies specific instructions uh, and divine plans uh, because what what god was getting ready to speak to joshua was literally gonna blow his mind but he had to obey Tell him, tell the people to march around the walls, to march around the walls. But God, we are warriors, we're fighters, but you're telling us to march around the walls? Yeah, uh-huh, because in, in that time, God gave Joshua instructions. There, there were requirements for the instructions, and when he obeyed the instructions, he saw the wall come down. See, when God gives us instructions, there's three things that we have to know. I want you to write these three down, these, 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 three, these, three, these three things down when God is giving us instruction. Number one, we must have the faith to believe. We must have the faith to believe that God is speaking. We must have the faith to believe what God is saying. We must have the faith to believe God's instruction. So we must have the faith to believe. Number two, we must have the courage to obey. The courage to obey. The courage to obey. I remember when the Lord spoke to me uh, uh, about two, two years ago when he had me start the aroma of prayer. And at that time, it was every morning. And I'm like, God, every morning, every morning, he gave me that assignment. And every morning, the Lord gave me a word for the people. Every morning, the Lord gave me a word for the people. And it was a step of faith. Sometimes I would be up hours and hours trying to get, just trying to get a word, trying to study. And it'd be five minutes before the call and God would just download what he wanted me to say to the people. And let me tell you something. Those would be some of my best aroma of prayers. I mean, it'd be hundreds of people on the line. And I mean, God just be going forth. And I realized that it wasn't in my education. It wasn't in my years of Bible school. It, wa it wasn't in my knowledge of the word of God, but it was in my connection to follow his instructions. And so now, instead of me trying to, to, to get something together, I now pray. I said, Lord, what do you want me to say to your people? Yesterday, I was, I was preparing for the power gathering, and the Lord spoke to me and said, it's time for a change. And God downloaded the sermon in me. After that, he said, Follow the instruction. And he downloaded this into my spirit today. So we got to get to a point that we must obey. So we have that. We must have number one, the faith to believe. Number two, courage to obey. And number three, the patience to wait on his timing. And that's when many of us get blown out the water. We get blown out the water because we like, okay. I'm taking a step of faith, God. I'm believing you. I have my, I'm, I have the courage to obey. Now it look like nothing's happening. But we got to learn how to have the patience to wait on his timing. We must have the patience to wait on his timing. Because when God gives us clear instructions through his word or through his spirit within us, our response must show that we trust him. 
Our response must be, God, I have faith in you. Father God, I have faith in your word. I have faith knowing that you would never leave me, nor would you forsake me. Uh, you, you would not put me out there by myself. So I got to believe and know that I trust your promises. Uh, your promises are precise. Your promises are complete if I walk in a level of obedience to you. Uh, so Lord God, whatever area in my life that, that is coming against me, obeying you and following your instructions, uh, Lord God, I decree and declare victory in that area of struggle in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I submit to you. I submit to your timing. I submit because I know that for what you have for me, my obedience is essential. My obedience is essential. My obedience is essential. Do you know that your obedience in this hour, just like those out there that are working, they are essential workers. It is needed to keep this country running. Don't you know your obedience is needed to, 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 to keep you in alignment with God? Did you know that? Your obedience is needed to keep you in alignment with, with God. Think about it. How many times, children, did you not follow the instruction and have missed a victory? How many of you have not followed the instructions of God and missed a victory? I'm not going to miss no victories no more. Do you hear me? I'm not tired my soul. I'm not going to miss no victories no more, but I'm going to follow the instructions. I want you to lay your hands on yourself and say, I'm going to follow the instructions. Yes, sir. I'm going to follow the instructions. Uh, Proverbs, 4, uh, Proverbs 1 and 3 tells us to receive instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity to give subtly to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. In the Amplified Bible, it says what? To receive instruction in wise behavior and the discipline of wise thoughtfulness, righteousness, justice, and integrity. It's time now for us to receive instruction in wise behavior. We must be disciplined in this hour. We must be disciplined. Now, if the Lord tells you to get up and pray, there's a reason for it. If the, if the Lord tells you to stay in the house, there's a reason for it. If the Lord tells you to go out, there's a reason for it. And, and even when he tells you to go out, there's a timing in which he's telling you to go out. You must understand and move in the timing of God. Uh, you know, for those of you who know me, I am always on the move. And you know, um, I'm, I'm, I am content in this quarantine, but every now and then I'll be scheming to get out and start doing, start, start doing some things. And every time I said, Oh, you know what? I'm going to go food shopping. I'll be getting myself together and then here come my phone ringing or somebody in front of my house. I'm going food shopping. Give me your list and I'm going shopping for you. And I'm like, oh. And so I'll be thinking of, of uh, oh, I have to go to the store to pick up something. So I'll go online and I check and make sure they have it in the store before before I go make a, make a purchase. And then somebody call me, oh, I'm going to Home Depot. Oh, I'm going to this. Do you need something? Oh, it's too expensive here. Go on Amazon and get it. And so every time I've been trying to, to work and the Lord spoke to me and he said to me, he says, he, he didn't call me Dr. Williams. He didn't call me prophet. He didn't call me pastor. He didn't call me none of that. He called me Tanya. He said, Tanya, you are in your season of metamorphosis. You're in your season of metamorphosis. And when the caterpillar goes in that season of metamorphosis, it is wrapped up in a cocoon. It is hidden for this hour. Asha, because there's a transformation that's, that's, that's happening. Uh, many of you in this hour, there is a transformation that is happening. Uh, that's why you can't move the way you want to move. Uh, and you can't operate the way you want to operate. Uh, because I understand in this hour that, that, the, that, my, that my assignment is critical and my, and my assignment is vital to be standing in the gap and interceding and, and snatching those out the fire and, and pulling down the strongholds uh, because you got to understand what your oil is. Uh, if you're called to be a prayer warrior, you got a war. If you're called to be a supplicant, you got to supplicate. If you're called to be a watchman, you got to watch. Uh, if you're called to be a gatekeeper, you gotta you have to guard the gates. Uh, if you're called to be a prophetic intercessor, you got to prophesy in the atmosphere and hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Uh, and be able to shift the atmosphere. If you're called to be an a a atmosphere shifter, huh? you can't be around everything and everyone, but you got to be sensitive 
sensitive uh, to the voice of God. Uh, you got to be sensitive uh, to what God is saying. Uh, so there's time when God will pull you to himself. Uh, there's time when he will take you away from everything and everybody. Uh, because I would say to the Lord, I said, well, God, you know, I'm doing the services now on Saturday and Sunday. I said, Lord, I can go up to the church and I and, and, and I can set up and the people can, can see me and, you know, we can have some church and I can get somebody to play. And he said, no, 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 no. You do what I tell you to do. You tell you, I tell my soul, my day, I see. He come to the little boho shot. I'm on so to boho. There will be a time where they'll see you. Uh, but I am on so, uh, but you must follow the instructions. Uh, I want you to lay your hands on yourself, children, and say, I'm going to follow the instructions. Uh, I'm going to follow the instructions. Uh, I'm going to follow the instructions. Uh, but see, but see, with sometimes when we, when we want to do what we want to do, uh, we will miss God. Uh, oh, 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 let me give you an example. Um, those who Failed to obey instructions, uh, suffered greatly. Uh, an example is why if uh, is Lot's wife. Uh -huh. The simple instruction given to her was, "Look not behind thee." Look not behind thee. That was the instructions that was given to her. But what happened? She didn't obey, and she was turned into a pillar of salt because of her disobedience. How many of you in certain areas of your life? You have become stagnant. You have become paralyzed like a pillar of salt because you didn't heed the instruction. You must follow the instruction. She didn't follow the instruction. And, and her story ended right there because she didn't follow the instruction. There is a reason why God has, has, is keeping us alive in this hour. This is a reason why God is, is allowing us to see another day. Because he has purpose for you. The Lord has a plan for you. He has something that is in store for you. And we can't be playing in this hour. We can't be playing in this hour. It's time now that we got to get into alignment with God. It's time now that we got to follow the instructions and do what? Walk in a level of obedience. I want you to lay your hands on yourself and say, obedience is critical to my life. Obedience is critical to my life. Do you hear me, children of God? Obedience is critical to, to what? To, is vital to my life. It's vital to my life. See, the Lord is requiring us to be, to be obedient in all things, all things, not just some things, children, but all things. See, we come to God for the big things, uh, but, but, uh, 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 but, what about the little things? Uh, the Bible says, in all thy ways acknowledge him, uh, and he will do what? Direct our path. Uh, see, for, for us to walk in obedience, it requires us to crucify our flesh, uh, our wants, and our desires. Uh, so we got to learn how to abide in him, and his words abide in us. And when we ask, uh, we will ask according to his will, because uh, when we are abiding, we are becoming one. Uh, oh, I'll take on the character and the nature of God, uh, and what, and what he desires for me shall be my desire. But my flesh has to be crucified. My wants have to be crucified. Just because your flesh wants it doesn't mean it's for you. I remember the Lord was deal. He was dealing. He was dealing with me about something. He was dealing with me about something, and um, he's still dealing with me about it. And the Lord was dealing with me about something, and I was like, "Well, God, that there is not what I thought you was going to give me." And blah 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 blah. I was going off in one of my little tangents, and the Lord said to me, "I'm not going to give you what you want. I'm going to give you what you need." Sometimes we don't know what we need. Sometimes, sometimes we want this shiny new toy, but it's the other, it's the other item is what we need, not the shiny new toy. God's going to give you what you need. I'm not saying that the Lord's not going to give you the desires of your heart, but if the desires of your heart is not going to be something that's going to build you, that's going to strengthen you, that's going to be there for you, you could miss God's divine plan for your life. This is the hour now. That there is my prayer. Lord, let me follow your instructions. Lord, I want to follow your instructions. I don't want to go to the left. I don't want to go to the right. But Lord, speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. Thy servant is hearing, God. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. 
Oh God, I don't want to miss you in this hour. I might have missed you before God, but I don't want to miss you in this hour because I realize that my life is not my own. It belongs to you, Lord. It belongs to you, Lord. Uh, and I got to get to a point that everywhere I go, my thoughts, my actions, uh, even my relationship with you, God, must be in obedience to you, Father. Obedience, children. Obedience is doing what God says when he says it and how he says it for whatever reason he says it. I know that was a mouthful, but I'm going to say it one more time. Obedience is doing what God says when he says it, how he says it, and for whatever reason he says he, he says it. We got to get to a point where we walking in obedience in this hour. We got to get to a point where he attire my soul. He kind of a whole shot that we walk in a level of obedience. We can't be turning to the left. We can't be turning to the right, but we must obey God. Do you hear me, children? We must obey God. We must follow the advice and the instructions of, of, of the Lord. Because so many times we are following the advice and the instructions of everybody else except for the Lord. Anybody on this line know what I'm talking about. We follow everybody else except for God. We make God the last resort. And Lord said, I shall be for. He wants to be first. It is easy to get distracted. It's easy to, 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 to listen to what others are doing. But we must do what? Follow the instructions of God. See, obedience requires sacrifice. Obedience requires sacrifice. It, it requires a sacrifice in what we think is important and what our flesh wants. It requires a sacrificing the easy way out. Because some things about God is not always going to be easy. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Anybody got some battle scars during their walk with the Lord? Yes, sir. Some things is not easy. Some things are not idiots. It's not easy. Obedience also requires discipline. Discipline. Because we must we must be disciplined and adamant about following the Lord's orders, obeying his word and directions that he has given to us. It's the hour now that we must walk in obedience, children. We must follow the instructions of God. Following instructions require hard work, commitment, and enduring to the end. Today, I wanted to preach. I wanted to hoop and holler. And the Lord said, no, you got to teach this. Because my people need to know that this is the hour that they have to follow the instruction. We must open our mind and our heart to the spirit of the Lord. And hear what he is saying in this hour and this time. Talk to the Lord. Ask the Lord for instruction, direction, and even understanding. Talk to the Lord today. Mm, today, we must choose to trust him. We must choose to wait on him. What did I tell you? We, we, we must have faith. We must have courage. And we must have patience when we're following the instructions of the Lord. We must have faith. We must have courage. And we must have uh, patience. Because even when he gave Joshua guidance and direction, he said, be careful to do according to all the law, to do according to my instruction. We will miss the Lord's will for our lives if we refuse to follow the instructions and take steps of obedience in this hour. I come against every spirit of disobedience. Every spirit of disobedience that will cause us to miss God and cause us to shift into his permissive will instead of his perfect will. I come against the spirit that will try to tempt us to disobey in any area of our life. And, 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 and it says to God that we don't trust him. When we disobey his instruction, we say that we know better. I was saying when, I, when he told me not to get on the parkway, I said, I, in so many words, I was saying, God, I know better. I can see. But when I turned the corner, I didn't know better. You knew better. It's time now for us to stop turning the corner and getting stuck in stuff that we didn't need to get stuck in. It's time now for us to stop, 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 stop dealing with bad consequences because of our choices. It's time now for us to be faithful. We must be faithful and following the instructions of God. 
The, def the definition says to be faithful is to be strict or thorough in performance of a duty. To, true, to be true to one's word, promises, or vows. To study in allegiance or affection. To be loyal and constant. This is the hour now, children, that we must obey and follow the instructions of Lord. My question to you today is how closely and attentive do you follow the Lord's instruction? Do you write down his instructions? Do you remember his instructions? Do you listen to his instructions? Or do you ignore his instructions? One of the things that the, 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 the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me, and it just kind of hit me in my back. And he said, can I trust you to follow my voice? Can I trust you to follow my voice? Those that are listening to me right now, can God trust you to follow his voice? He's speaking, but if you're not obeying and following his instruction, then you're saying you don't trust him. You're saying that you don't have faith in him. You're saying that you don't believe him. Today, set your mind to trust the Lord. Set your mind to walk into obedience. Set your mind to follow his instruction. This is not the hour to turn to the left or turn away from God and turn away from God's plan and his instructions for your life. This is the hour now that we must be faithful to his instructions, to stay focused on his purpose that he has laid out because God has a desired plan for our lives. Going back to one of my favorite scriptures, Jeremiah 29 and 11, for he knows the thoughts and plans that he has towards us saith the Lord, they're good and not of evil to give us what an expected and a future and a hope. He has plans. He has instructions. He has direction. He has guidance for our lives. We must get to a place now that we obey and we follow the spirit of the Lord. It's the hour now that we follow the instructions. There are detailed instructions. God has tools and he wants to equip you and he wants to equip me for every good work. But we must get ourselves together. We must follow his direction. I was talking to someone the other day and I was saying to him, I said, I said, said to the individual, I said, I think you need to stay still for a while. It's not time to move. I said, I trust the God in you, but it's not time to move. Follow the instructions. Follow the instructions. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we come before you this morning, Lord God. We thank you for the word that you have sent out. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, that this word has pricked my heart and pricked the heart of many that is listening to the sound of my voice. Lord God, we come before you repenting. Repenting, Lord God, when we didn't follow your instructions. Father God, we come repenting when, when we went our own way instead of going the way of obedience. Father God, creating us a clean heart. Father God, renewing us the right spirit. And Father, we humble ourselves today and we say that we're sorry. Lord God, forgive us, Father. Lord God, put us on the right path, Lord Father, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, this day we desire to do your will. We desire to follow your instructions uh, wholeheartedly, Lord God. Father God, for you have a plan of action, Father, that you have outlined for us in your word. Father God, we admit today, Lord God, our many challenges and even our outright disobedience. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, Lord God, that many of us in certain areas of our lives, we, we've been turned into a pillar of salt. Father God, for you gave us instruction and we didn't follow through. And Father, we come to say thank you for another day. Thank you, God, for not taking us out when you could have. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, and thank you for giving us another chance. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord God, teach us how to stay focused. And Lord God, teach us how to stay faithful to you and your instructions in our lives. Lord God, teach us, oh Father, that we may do the things that please you. Uh, Lord God, give us revelation power of your Holy Spirit concerning your instructions, Father. Lord God, we pray for divine direction. Uh, Lord God, make it known unto us, Lord God. Make it known unto us, Lord God. Make it known unto us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Uh, remove from us every form of distraction uh, that has blocked our spiritual eyes and spiritual ears uh, from visions and divine instructions 
nations in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Lord God, let every alternative uh, that have presented itself uh, consciously and unconsciously uh, in our lives, Father, Lord God, we cancel it and we terminate it right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord God, let your spirit of revelation and wisdom and knowledge uh, flow from out of us, Father. Lord God, we pray, Lord Jesus, uh, Lord God, that you have mercy on us, oh God, uh, from every wrong decision that we made. Uh, Lord God, have mercy on us, oh God, uh, that we place our confidence in man uh, and we place our confidence in ourselves uh, instead of placing our confidence in you. Uh, Lord God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're opening up our spiritual understanding, Lord Jesus. Uh, Lord God, that you will teach us uh, the deep and secret things, uh, that you will re- I tell my soul, uh, that you will reveal to us, oh God, your will, oh Father, concerning our lives, oh God, uh, and concerning the instructions that you put before us. Uh, Lord God, we bind every spirit uh, of confusion. Uh, we bind every spirit uh, of manipulation. Uh, we bind every spirit uh, that will try to cause us to detour uh, off of your plan for our lives. Uh, Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, teach us your way, oh God. Uh, teach us your way, oh God, uh, Lord God, that we may walk circumspectly, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, God is all thy great Jehovah. Direct us, Father, in the name of Jesus. Uh, oh, Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, make our way and our paths plain, Lord Jesus. Uh, reveal to us the secret things uh, and make it known unto us. Uh, and, Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, Lord God, we pray right now, God, that the choices that we make, Father, Lord God, they are godly choices. Uh, they aren't fleshly choices, uh, but, Father, they are they are godly choices. Uh, and, Father, we thank you, Lord God, uh, and we give you praise, Father. Lord God, we decree today, Father, that we will follow the instructions. Uh, speak, Lord, uh, thy servant heareth. Uh, because if you don't speak to us, uh, we won't know what to do. Uh, Lord God, we don't want to go it alone. Uh, but, Lord God, you want us to, we want you to be with us. Uh, Lord God, we, we want you to lead us and guide us uh, into all truth. Uh, and, Father, we thank you, Lord God. Uh, we praise you, Lord Jesus. Uh, we give you glory and honor, Lord God, uh, Father, because it belongs to you and we thank you Lord God and we glorify you and this day we thank you for another chance this day we thank you for another chance we thank you for looking past all of our faults and we thank you Lord God for seeing our needs Father, you have allowed us to see another day. And Lord God, let us make the most of this day in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, children. Let's give our Father praise. Come on, let's give him glory. Come on, let's. Ha, ah, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, go down in the innermost parts of us, God. Ah, Lord God, give us a belly washing. Ah, oh, God. More, more, more of you, God. Ah, for more of us, God. Ah, yes, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. Ah, give, us, give us a spirit to obey. Ah, Give us a spirit to obey. Uh. Give us a spirit to obey. Uh. Give us a spirit to obey. Uh. Give us a hanama show. Uh. Give us a spirit to obey. Ha uh. shata bohosha. And we thank you, Lord. And we praise you. And we glorify you in Jesus' name. Ah, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Mm, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I feel God doing something down on the inside of us. Uh, I think how my show. Uh, ah, I feel God doing something down on the inside of us. Uh, we might not can physically be with each other, but I feel God doing something down on the inside of us. Uh, if you grab this word uh, and took this word, how uh, must I wash me, Lord? Uh, cleanse me, Lord. Uh, purge me, Lord. Uh, I've made mistakes because I followed my own instruction, but today, how uh, my show? Uh, I make a vow unto the Lord. Uh, Help me, Lord, uh, to follow your instruction. Uh, help me, Lord, uh, not to lean to my own understanding. Uh, help me, Lord, uh, to hold on to the horns of the altar. Uh, help me, Lord, uh, to lead and guide me into all truth. Uh, help me, Lord. Oh, Bohosha. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, thank you, Lord. Glory to God. We thank you for what you're doing. Uh, we thank you, Lord God. Uh, Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Hashaman so. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we glorify your name. We glorify your name. We glorify your name. Children of God, it's time for us to take our eyes 
off the confusing, misleading information that we're seeing on the news. And if you're not careful, it'll get you paranoid and, and you won't go nowhere and you walk around with a, with, with, with a hazmat suit and all kinds of things. But we got to concentrate on the truths of God's word. We got to get to a place that we trust him as our guide to get us to our destination. And I thank God this morning that the Lord has given us his word. His word is that God-given instrument to lead us to him and to his will for our life. God's word reveals that. It is God's will for us to be in right relationship with him. Uh, this is the instrument that informs us that the only way to this relationship with him is through Jesus Christ, uh, his son. And as long as we continue to read and follow the instrument panel of God's word, he will continue to give us and lead us to the destination he has prepared for us. This morning, there might be somebody that's on this line that you might be listening to the stream, you might have came across it, you might be on the conference call line, somebody might have shared this and you happen to listen to it. Ah, I want to offer you today salvation. Salvation is a choice. You can make that choice now. In fact, you are a prayer away from your salvation. The Bible says that if we confess with our mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Yes, you, you, listening to the sound of my voice right now, you can be saved. Yes, you can. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is, and it is with your mouth that you confess that you are saved. Today, I talked about following instructions. Many of you that's listening to the sound of my voice, you might not know this Jesus that I'm talking about today. But today you can come into right relationship with him and hear the instructions of the Lord and allow him to guide your life and allow him to guide it how he has purpose for it. So if you are willing to take Jesus Christ in as your Lord and Savior, uh, and you heeded the salvational call of this morning, and you are ready to receive salvation, then I want you to repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I come to you confessing that I am a sinner. I repent from my sins and ask you for forgiveness. I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that you raised him from the dead. I confess that Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. I believe that through his shed blood, I have eternal life. Please, today, yes, Sunday, Mother's Day, yes, please, today, come into my heart. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lead me. Guide me. Give me instructions so that my soul can come in alignment with you and your word. Father, I pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So for those of you that have followed along with me, if you have prayed this prayer in earnest, you are saved. Your sins have been forgiven, and you are now one in the body of Christ. So let me be the first to say welcome to the body of Christ. Welcome to a body of believers. Welcome and for, if you like more information, you can call the ministry number at 1-888-950-8048. I want you to get connected to a good church. Right now, you have a smorgasbord of many, many preachers and churches that are online that you can get connected to. And I'm just so glad that you've taken the opportunity. It's not by accident that you're, you're hearing my voice today. It's by divine appointment. It's by divine appointment that the Spirit of the Lord has you here on the line with me. And I pray that this word has touched your heart, that now you will be with the rest of us, learning and following the instructions of the Lord. Amen. 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 I'm just so grateful on this morning. I'm so grateful on this morning. Ah, I pray and I pray that those of you that are charged up, that your life will never be the same. 
your life will never be the same and i'm just grateful for that and for those of you that are on the line it's our time to them so uh we have on uh in the comment bar you can sew via cash app you can sew via paypal or you can sew via zelle however the lord places on your heart for those of you you can sow a 25 dollar seed a 25 dollar seed some of you you, you can you can sow more you can sow 50 dollar seed a hundred dollar seed however the lord places on your heart to sow and for those of you I know that I have uh, people on the line at Dr. Williams. I don't have that. And what I did ask, if you take an envelope and um, you put your seed inside that envelope, and when and when, when we come together, you can sew your envelope. Amen? You can sew your envelope. I have some mothers, they say, Dr. Williams, I don't have Zelle. I don't have Cash App. I don't have PayPal. It's okay. Take take what what your seed is and you put it in that envelope and when and, and, and when we meet or when we come together, you'll be able to sow your seed. Amen. Amen. I'm just so grateful for today. This word has blessed me. This word has gotten down to the to the to, to my spirit on today. A anybody on this line today, this word has blessed you. Anybody on this line today, this word has blessed you because I know it is. It has blessed me. And again, I want to thank the many of you that's wishing me a happy Mother Mother's Day. I'm sending love back to you. And again, for those of you that came on late, I want to wish everyone, everyone, a happy, happy Mother's Day. Whether you're a natural mother, a spiritual mother, a godmother, an auntie, a sister, wherever you might find a foster mom, where adopted mom, wherever you might find yourself on the spectrum, we celebrate you. We celebrate you. We celebrate you. For those of you that, that, that have your mothers here, we celebrate you. For those of you that have your children here, we celebrate you. But we don't forget those who mothers have passed on. We celebrate you as well. We celebrate you. Those who, who whose children might have passed, we celebrate you as well. Ah, you're not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. We're with you. We got you. We, we're, we're praying for you, and we are the wind in your back. Yes, we are. We are the wind in your back, and I appreciate you, and I love you guys so, 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 so much. So, again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me this morning on Power Sunday. And, again, don't forget to sow uh, Cash App, dollar sign, Dr. Tanya W., or the Ministry of Visionaries, uh, uh, dollar sign, uh, Visionaries W., or you can, uh, uh, there's a link here for PayPal, or you can even do Zelle. Amen. So thank you so much for joining me today. I pray, I just feel something in, in my spirit. I know I got to get off because I'm 11 minutes over time. I said an hour, but I just feel that there is somebody on this line that got saved. There's somebody on this line who, who, whose life, has been changed because of this word. And I'm excited to walk in a level of obedience. Amen. Amen. As you go forth today, be blessed, be encouraged, and know one thing. When we go with God, God certainly will go with us. And if, if, if I was to say one thing to you today, the word of the Lord for you today is what? Follow the instructions. Be blessed. Have a blessed, a wonderful, and awesome day in Jesus' name. God bless you, everyone.